Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to the tech screen tutorial of this Horizon Zero Dawn or Horizon Forbidden West inspired helmet or is it a mask? I still haven't figured it out. In the previous tutorials, we have modeled and UV mapped it. So now it is ready for some texturing in Substance Painter. And that's what we're gonna be covering today. If you are new to this channel, I post video tutorials on a weekly basis. Software includes Maya, ZBrush, and Substance Painter. So if that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out your creativity, open up that software, and let's go ahead and get started in texturing this really funky looking but awesome looking helmet. All right, so this is what we have so far. We have all of our pieces, we have overlapping UVs, and everything's ready to go. The first thing we wanna do is select our model, and actually, let me go to general here. All right, F for focus. Whoa, that's really focused. Okay, zoom out. And let's combine, let's go to mesh, combine. Up at the top, there it is. This is gonna create a poly surface, a new one, and also a bunch of empty nodes. So let's delete the history, freeze the transformations, all that stuff right here. And I'm gonna call this my helmet. I still haven't figured it out. I'm gonna guess, I guess a helmet, is it a mask? Oh. And I'm gonna add these later, by the way. I need to move on to texturing, but uh, this I think I'm just gonna procedurally shade those. Now that we've combined it, let's go ahead and export it. So file, export, selection. We are gonna be using an OBJ. I am gonna put it in scenes and let's go ahead and call this my helmet and export. Let's jump into Substance Painter. Here it is, beautiful Substance Painter. Let's import our object by going to File, New. We are gonna use PBR, Metallic, or Roughness, Alpha. Let's select our file. There it is. And personally, I'm gonna go to 2048 and then go ahead and click OK. All right, here it is. Ooh, there's my helmet, looking good. Let's take a look at some reference. Here's my pure ref, and you can see that it's pretty metallic, but in some, it actually looks more black and some looks more blue. So I'm, uh, in the game, you can change the colors. So I'm probably gonna stick more to dark, but it does have this leather face thingy, and then it also has this white section here. So that's gonna be helpful in uh, reproducing this. So I'm gonna put this on the side, and I'm gonna go to the smart material just because I like the control that it gives me. And let's click on leather. All right, we have a variety of leather and I want worn. So I'm gonna grab this and drag it into the object. Now you can put it in the model or you can put it in the UVs, it doesn't really matter. Um, but it does cover the whole thing, right? And this is pretty uh, flat leather and I probably want it to be a little bit more sh uh, shiny. So I'm gonna be fixing some things, but let's go ahead and open up the smart material. And here we have leather damages, right? So if we turn off and on the thing, we don't see too much change. And the reason why is because I have missed a significant step, which is baking your textures. So this is the, once you open and import your model, this is the second step you should do. And let's go ahead and go to texture set settings. Let's scroll down. Here's our bake map, bake mesh maps. Let's make sure this is a 2048 map, so 2K map. I'm gonna go ahead and increase my dilation width. Moving on to world space, ID. I don't really have ID, so I'm gonna have to skip that one. Ambient occlusion, again, I like to crank these up so I can get some really nice texture information so that it drives these smart materials. Let's go ahead and bake it. And I have a video tutorial on how you guys can um, improve your models. If you're having some weird edging or weird noise information and stuff like that, I have a video on that. I'll post it up on the, um, on the corner here. So this is kind of fun. It's always fun watching uh, these objects get baked because it's pretty interesting how it works. So you can see the thickness map, the thicker it is, the whiter it is. All right, cool. Uh, let's play with this material. Let's go back to layers. Let's click on this, open up the folder. And here we are. Take a look at what happens when we turn it on and off. Ah, there it is. But let's see if we can reduce the height. There it is. So we can make it really dramatic or we can kind of reduce the height. I'm just gonna reduce it a little bit. And let's move on to this le leather. Let's scroll down and I want it to be uh, less rough. So I want it to be a little bit shiny and I want it to be a little darker. So I'm gonna darken it up a little bit. 
I'm going to increase the scale just a little bit more so I can get a little bit more of that texture information there. And you know, it doesn't hurt to rotate it if you want to. That doesn't do much, but uh, let's, we can play with the hardness and soften it, which, you know, it's very subtle, but that's okay. Let's take a look at the fill. All right, so the fill is the part that makes it shinier. So I'm gonna go ahead and play with that. And you can also increase the contrast if you like. And let's go back to our damage. As you can see, we can reduce the height, but the roughness is pretty high. So let me go ahead and reduce the roughness so it can be, you know, still a little shiny. It's nice to break it up a little bit. So shift, right click, you can kind of see how it's changing the color. All right, that's a good start. Let's move on to the other pieces. So the other pieces include a white plastic. So let's go ahead and type in plastic and see what we get. So there's plastic dirty and plastic dusty. And I'm going to go for plastic dirty because that looks like something, you know, Aloy has to go out there and be adventurous. So let's see what that looks like. All right, let me grab it again and drag it in here. There it is. And yeah, it's, I can see a little bit of the dirt, kind of breaks it up a little bit, it's nice. But we really only want it to affect this particular area. We don't want it to affect everything. So we are going to add a black mask. And once we have that, we probably want to just select this section here. Now you can try painting it in and you'll notice that, you know, if I paint it in, it kind of affects other things, which is kind of dangerous. So let's grab this tool instead. This tool is the polygon fill. So what I can do is tell it to grab polygons and then click on it. Or you can select the other one, which is the model and just click on the model. And just like that, we get the plastic look, which is great, super fast, super easy. That is all we ever want is just fast. And let's get another base going here. So I'm gonna call this white plastic. Dirty, sounds good. This is the leather, which is fine. And then now we're gonna go to the next one, which is the metal. So let's see what type of metal it provides for us. Let's see, we have a lot of metal. I want something a little beaten up, like maybe this, I can always change the color. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh, that's, uh, that's, that's a little too much, I think. All right, let's find something else. Uh, we're gonna have to experiment a little bit, but you're still steel rusty. All right, I kind of like to look at that. Let's, oh, this is steel ruined. And we do have a bunch of dirt, which I'm probably gonna calm down a little bit. And we also have some sharpen. Uh, we have some edge worn, which I love. And then we have edge damages, which definitely I'm gonna keep. And I might use it for the whole thing. Uh, we have dirt. Um, let me just start hiding things. We have bump, love how this is broken down. Woo, and we finally get to the base. Let's get the color. All right, let's, uh, I'm gonna color uh, pick it and I'm grabbing it from the actual game, but that doesn't mean that's the right color because it's picking up purple and I prefer a little bit more bluish. But uh, if you actually look at the reference, it is kind of purple blue, so that was nice. Um, all right, I'm happy with this color. Let's go ahead and swing all the way back to the top and let's give us right click and add a black mask. And we're gonna grab this one, which again, it is for polygons, and we just have to click on the polygon. And there you go. It's really shiny. And let's not forget this one, because that one's shiny too, and this one. All right, so we basically have the base completed really fast. I'm gonna have to fix that leather, I'm not, I'm not convinced. <laughs> Let me hide this, is that better? Yeah, it's a little better. Okay, uh, going back to the steel ruined, Let's play around. Let's see, we have some roughness dirt, which is really rough, so I don't need it to be that rough. So let me go ahead and reduce it a bit. And it's using a grunge map, right? So we can try reducing the balance, and I do want some texture, just not that much. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of reduce it a little bit. Because I do want it to, um, you know, to be affected. Ooh, so pretty. We can increase the contrast or reduce the contrast. Might increase it, decrease it a little bit. And let's see what happens with the cracks. Ooh, that's kind of neat. Uh, we'll just leave it at that. All right, that looks 
good. Let me maybe calm it down a little bit. Just a little bit. And the color, I'm going to try to go for a little bit more, maybe, yeah, a little darker silver. Might still be unlocked. Let's see. I can also grab this and reduce the opacity a little bit. Whoopsie. Go back up. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, I can grab the opacity and reduce it a bit. All right, let's bring the bumps. Uh, I dig the bumps. I think it's a little strong and I also think they're huge. So let's see what this is made out of. Uh, let's grab this and reduce the, nope, not that one. You just have to explore. You can do really high contrast, which I don't want. So let me just kind of calm that down a little bit. Uh, let's go here and looks like they're just using it. There's the grunge map again. And again, we can kind of play with the contrast. We can play with, oops, sorry, the balance. And then there's the contrast, right? So I do want some noise information. I just don't want it to be overwhelming. So just a little bit of noise is just fine. All right, moving on to dirt. I do want dirt, but I also don't want that much dirt. So let's go ahead and read. Do a couple of things. Not really sure why the dirt is metallic, but I'll keep it. Uh, let's see, it's got a couple of grunge maps, so let's reduce it. And he's got another one. You know, it's it's really fun watching how or breaking down how they do this. It's it's pretty incredible the the map that they have. And let's see if I can find it color it's a little in dark i want i would love to get some of that color but in the blue so let me grab it and i'm going to grab this kind of like blue and just kind of darken the blue a little bit that way i still get that grunge but it's still looking it doesn't overwhelm the color as much it still maintains kind of blue might be a little too shiny still I have to go back and reduce the metallicness, but I also wanted to, so I want to see it. Uh, let's go back to the base. I'm going to reduce the metallicness a little bit, just a little bit. All right, moving up, let's go to edge damage, which I'm going to leave. Let's go to edge highlight, which I love, but again, it's so grungy. Um, I want some of that, but I don't want all of that. So let's select that. Let's reduce the hardness and the scale which is not doing anything. I don't need it to be white. I'm gonna just kind of reduce it a little bit to more like a gray. And let's take a look at the mask. Take a look at the mask editor and see what they're, okay. So they're using, there you go. I can control it a little bit more. I do want damage on the edge. I just don't want a lot. So you see that the white's really overwhelming the color. I might have to go in and maybe even get rid of that roughness map. Sometimes you just don't need it. All right, so that's looking a little cleaner. All right, I bring it back, but cool. All right, scrolling up, we got sharpen and then we have dirt and the dirt is extreme. So I might, keep a little bit of dirt, uh, but it's going to be very little. And I'm going to use opacity maybe. Let's see what happens if I just reduce the opacity a tiny bit. All right, so that kind of does a little bit of that. So that's kind of fun. Still looks metallic. It does look like I've seen, you know, battles, uh, but looking really good. All right, let's go back to the plastic. So this is what we're doing. We're just kind of starting with the base, and then we're going to um, start adding details from there. So let's go back to the plastic and the plastic is looking a little uh, flat. So it's got edges. I want it to be a little bit more, uh, less rough basically. So let's add a little bit of metalness to it. And let's go ahead and reduce the roughness. There it is. So I just wanna make sure that when the sun hits it, it shines, right? It doesn't have to have reflections and maybe that's a little too much. Let me reduce the metalness but I just want to make sure we actually see it. All right, that looks good. That's how you start with the base. Cool, that's the base. Let me go back to the leather 
and see if I can control that bump a little bit more. So you can actually choose things like divide and all these things, but you can also go and select up here at the top, normal, for example, and then you can change the normal. Or let's go to height. There we go. And let's reduce the height. Can you see how it's here? Let me get closer. Uh, I can actually go in and reduce the height. So it's not so, you know, prominent. Ooh, this is exciting stuff, everybody. Exciting stuff. I love it. Substance Painter, when it came out, everybody was like, what? This is amazing. And I feel like it needs some dirt. So I'm going to steal some dirt from here. Uh, let's grab. Let's see. There's a lot of edge damage. So I'm going to copy this. Control C. I'm going to go to my leather. Control V. Let's see if we get some edge damage. We have a little bit of edge damage, I think, now. Yeah, we got some edge damage, but we can manipulate it more. So let's grab this. I'm going to make it a little bit. Whoop, there it is. A little bit brighter so we can see it. Let's go to the grunge maps and kind of play around with the balance. I'm going to kind of lower these things. Same thing for the other one. Just kind of play with these things. A little bit more grunge. Let's play around with the scale. All right, let's go back to this one. And maybe I do want to increase it a little bit. Now, if you want, you can add your own map. So if, for example, if you want to add another, uh, you can actually add a paint layer. And then you can kind of paint it in yourself. But let me grab a brush. I need a grungy brush. Get rid of that. Something grungy like this one. And let me press the letter X which is going to give me a black color, as you can see here. And you might want to go in and just kind of paint some of this back. So again, I just want some edge wear. I don't need it to be all over this thing. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of paint it away. And the magic is, is that it happens on one side, it happens on the other. So it does look, if you look carefully, it is mirroring. So we do have to, you know, keep, keep an eye on that. Um, I think it's a little light, so let me go back and I'm going to pick the color and then I'm just going to go to a, a lighter, a brighter color. Something like that. I think it's a good place to stop. We covered a bunch of things, including exporting the OBJ, bring it into Substance Painter and play it around with a bunch of smart materials and um, start building the base texture for this Horizon Forbidden West inspired helmet slash mask. Still haven't figured that one out. Leave in the comments what you think it is, but thank you so much for watching and hopefully you learned a thing or two. If you did, please like and subscribe. That would be amazing and also a way to show me that you like this content and that you want to see more. Uh, take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. There you can find free trainings, free eBooks, free 3D models, and so much more. And also, there is an e-courses section. If you would like to support me further, it'd be amazing if you could purchase an e-course or so. My e-courses are a deep dive into Maya when it comes to modeling, UV mapping, texturing, and lighting. So please support me by purchasing an e-course. Otherwise, thank you for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time creating, and I will see you next time when we, when we start adding more details to this helmet and then import it into Maya for final render. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.